What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled people. Alright, this story's called, Threaten to hit me with your car? Good luck getting your car out! I was reading a post today that reminded me of something that happened back in 2009. Both of my sons were in middle school and high school, old enough to stay home by themselves. I worked a 5 to close shift at the local chain hair salon. We lived in a condo and my neighbors were notorious for stealing someone's shoved, shoveled parking space. I knew someone was going to take my spot and asked my youngest son if he would start to shovel my spot out when I called him to tell him I was on my way home. I told him it was worth $20 and he was happy to do it. Damn. <laughs> Imagine getting paid for that by your parents. That's cool. Anyway, I called him at 9.05 p.m. and he went out to get to work. We had about six inches of snow on the ground and he only needed to shovel enough for my tires to hit blacktop and for me to get out of the car. I get home and I see him standing there in no cleared space. I did see a shiny new BMW W parked where he said he was going to shovel out for me. I got out of the car and asked him what had happened. This boy burst into tears and told me some woman drove up while he was cleaning out the space and threatened to run him over if he did not move and let her park where he had just spent 20 minutes shoveling for me. He told her he was shoveling for his mom who would be there in 5 minutes. She started honking and cursing at him to move. She actually drove the front bumper of her car into him and was threatening him with the car. She she almost hit a 12 year old with her car just so she could have a clear parking spot to park her beamer in. The best part? She did not even live there. She was someone's guest and was supposed to park in the guest parking spot. I parked down in the next lot and walked back to the condo. My son had gone inside and calmed down by then. I checked and he was not injured, just mad and scared, poor kid. I told him it was not worth someone almost hitting him with their car over a snow free parking space. I gave him the $20 and told him some people are just evil and to forget about it. I wanted to call the police, but I knew it was Rich Bimbo's word against a 12 year old since I had not seen what had happened. We did not live in the best area, and the cops mostly could not be bothered with us lesser humans. Since the next day was a snow day, no school, my boys were up playing video games, and my 12 year old told his brother, who was 14, what had happened. My oldest son came out and asked me if what his brother said was true about the woman trying trying to hit him with her car over a parking spot, and I told him to go look outside for himself. My oldest comes in and asks me what we were going to do about Rich Bimbo. I told him, growing up in Baltimore City, is someone stole your spot in front of your house like that, we would just shovel them in to teach him a lesson. My oldest got this look on his face and told his brother to get his coat and boots on and to grab a shovel. Those boys spent from 10pm to 11pm shoveling this woman's car in. They packed so much snow around her car all you could see was the roof they took snow from all over the parking lot to pack around her car i know i should not have laughed or encouraged them but i felt it was justice that rich bimbo bullied a 12 year old by and got her car almost completely packed in snow her car sat like that for three days until the snow started to melt and no one figured out my kids had done it maybe next time the rich bimbo will think twice about bullying a child for a parking spot in the winter okay first First of all, poor little bro, alright, um, cool big bro for, you know, wanting to do something about it, I like that. And sick ass mom for <laughs> giving them the idea, alright, you're not a bad mom, you're not immature for letting him do that, alright? Cops couldn't do, <laughs> more like, wouldn't do anything, so you had to take matters into your own hands. And I think y'all did well. And for good measure, I would have like, taken a dump in the snow and buried it under the snow, but like, against the windshield. <laughs> It'd be funny, because it'd freeze to the windshield, and then, like, you just have a, a frozen turd stuck to the windshield. And when it starts to melt, it won't smell good. And she sees it, she sees it on the windshield, and she turns on the windshield wipers. Huh, <laughs> bad idea. Alright, this story's called Racist Karen Anti-Masker Pepper Sprays Cashier Gets Arrested for Assault. I'm a small town cop in Michigan who deals with many Karens on a monthly basis. I got an emergency call from a gas station on the edge of the city about a racist anti-masker refusing to leave the store and getting aggressive. When my partner and I arrived, the Karen was already screaming at the cashier. Yo stupid freaking n-word! As we opened the door, she pulled out 
the pepper spray and let loose on the cashier. I wish we had gotten there a bit sooner. I know how much pepper spray hurts. We grabbed the pepper spray out of her hand and my partner arrested her and read her her rights. I went behind the counter to check on the cashier who was on the floor sobbing. Oh my god, that's this is terrible. After washing his face with the hose outside and with milk, he was feeling well enough for me to bring him to the urgent care. He was fine after an hour or so and Karen was charged with assault. The cashier apparently had told Karen he couldn't serve her without a mask due to store policy and she wouldn't listen. He had told her if she refused to leave the store, he would call the police and she started screaming at him and calling him slurs. It only took us seven minutes to get there, but that was not fast enough to keep him from getting pepper sprayed. Oh, well, first off, good on the cops for getting there so fast, because, <laughs> like, it depends. Oh, small town cop. Okay. I was imagining it was Detroit for some reason, but man, that's scary. I just got to say, if you're in any if in any of these industries where you got to deal with idiotic customers um, and you have to and you have to tell them they have to wear a mask, I I'm really. <laughs> just thank you first of all i know it's not easy okay to constantly have to deal with that kind of confrontation and typically the people who are anti-maskers are the same type of people to be crazy and think they're like enlightened and not you know brainwashed or whatever so they're gonna act aggressive toward you it it's scary and like i'm really i don't know it, it hurts me personally to know that so many people are having to freaking go through this every day all right i'm not just talking about oh one person person one day, another person another day. There are a lot of people who are having to tell people multiple times a day, wear a mask or get out, wear a mask or get out. And I guarantee to you, each time you do it, you get more and more uneasy that maybe this next person's gonna lash out on you. And that's just messed up. Um, so like on a real note, thank you guys. You're appreciated and like, you have my sympathy. Like I, I'm scared for you. People are bonkers. And I don't mean to fear monger, but that's just the state of the world, or at least America. America. God damn. All right, this story's called Karen Tells Me What I Should Be Reading in Public. I moved closer to my parents last year because they're getting older and need help with some things. Earlier today, I took my mom to a doctor's appointment, but because of the office rules, couldn't accompany her inside, so I sat on a bench outside the door, popped in my headphones, and read on my Kindle. I was reading How Much To by Matt Shaw, and it is incredibly gory and horrific. About 20 minutes later, my headphones are pulled out by someone and I figured it was my mom just being silly. <coughs> so I look up with a grin, directly into the deep pools of self-righteous entitlement known as Karen Eyes. Here's the cast. Karen. Me. Somewhat paraphrased. I don't have a great memory. I can't believe you would read something so disgusting in public like this. There are children that visit this building. There's a pediatrician's office three or four units down. And you're smiling while reading that filth? How do you even know what I'm reading? I saw you making faces from over there. Points to a car nearby. And I thought you might have been looking at an appropriate thing, so I came and looked over your shoulder. Okay. Okay, lady, well, what's on my Kindle is really just for me to worry about, so have a lovely day and please leave me alone. Poor random mom walks by. Ma'am, would you want your child reading about people being forced to grind their own teeth down on concrete? Um, no? Well, this man is reading stories just like that right now. Out loud? Me to poor random mom? Nah, she stood over my shoulder for a couple of minutes, apparently. Yes, it's on his device. Vice, but still. And I wouldn't have known a thing about what he was reading if you hadn't announced it. So why not just leave him alone? That's not the point. That filth shouldn't be allowed in public. Well, you're more than free to have whatever you want on your device, as am I. And don't touch my crap again. I pop my headphones in again. Poor random mom rolls her eyes and walks away. Karen waves for my attention. I look up, give an annoyed, what, and pop out one bud. Young man, I think you should reconsider what you put into your head. And I rolled my eyes and popped my earbud back in. I hear her, Charlie Brown, womp womp, crap go another few seconds, then grunted and stomped 
away. At this point, my mom was coming out of the office, so I was more worried about helping her into the car than anything else. But as I pulled away, I saw Karen talking to another random person and angrily pointing in my direction. <laughs> I hit her with that special screw you smile you learn from working with general public and went on my merry way. People are strange when you're a stranger. Nah, people are just strange just as is. No, no prerequisites necessary. People are just freaking weird. Like, who does that? That's just... Ah! Alright, this story's called... Entitled Cousin Thinks She Deserved To Be Called Sister After She Mistreated Me And My Family For Years. As long as I could remember, my cousins and I never really got along. I had a condition, probably ADHD, from young, which I wasn't aware of until a few years ago, which prevented me from communicating with many people. Either they weren't aware of it and couldn't care less of my condition, plus they never made the effort to talk and hang out with me. My female cousin always insisted I call her sister, even though she never once treated me like a brother, and whenever I call her by name, she freaked out and lashed out at me. I always called her by her name just to piss her off. <laughs> when my aunt suffered a heart attack, my parents drove all night to another state. I had a project the next day and had no transport to take me to my college. My groupmates thought badly of me and I almost failed the project. While my aunt was recovering, my cousin thought it'd be best to not have any visitors for her, so no one was allowed to visit her. It was like showing us the finger after my parents even went to as far as to transfer her to a heart specialist hospital. They felt like they were casted out and treated like outsiders. Neither my cousin's brother nor her father did anything about it. One day after some time, she, her husband, and child decided to visit my family. My parents were out, leaving me and my grandma at home. When it came to lunch, I asked her to eat something by saying, her name, please eat something. She got up from the table and asked, what the hell did I call her? That's when I told her why should I call her sister after what she did. I unleashed all my frustrations on her, even telling her due to her mom having a heart attack, we had to cancel our party plans where I was supposed to invite my college mates to my house. She had nothing to say and ate angrily. She left afterwards without saying anything. Things between me and her family have been somewhat awkward. None of us want to talk about it, thinking it might make things worse and decide it's best we pretend it never happened. Honestly, that family is somewhat toxic and controlling towards many people. Part of me wants to cut ties, but the other part wants to settle this dispute with them once and for all. I'll post part two of her brother later. Okay, what? They drive all night to another state to visit this woman in her hospital, and they turn them away? What? Do they not realize how many freaking people go to the hospital with no one to visit them? They're just stuck there, alone, have forced to deal with all the emotions that could be going on inside their freaking mind and whatnot alone no one to talk to just a bunch of strangers prodding you with needles and you know <laughs> potentially just being jerks because i've read some horror stories from hospitals here Ugh. like like it's it's so messed up man do you know how many people would kill to have family that would drive all night to see them in a hospital like when they need them all right this story's called my entitled sister blames the world for not applying to college I am so pissed off at my sister right now. She's angry at her own mistakes and isn't taking any accountability. This story only makes sense with backstory. My sister graduated from our small town high school a few years ago and wanted to go to a college with her preferred major, musical theater. But she never applied for scholarships and our family couldn't afford sending her to a performing arts school out of state. So she took classes at the community college to stay on track. While she stayed home, she was supposed to get a job to pay for her community college classes and for when she transfers because my parents don't make her pay rent, her car, or any luxuries she had before she became an adult. But she blew all of her money off by going out with friends and buying frivolous stuff. Sounds a lot like me. <laughs> when she told me she was going to stay here, I told her to open up a savings account, but she brushed me off. Now she thinks it's the best time. Months before she's supposed to graduate, 
graduate to open a savings account and save money she earns while working. That's only the backstory. The real story starts a few days ago. I went to my mom's office in between school and an extracurricular. My sister also works there. My mom comes up to the break room where I'm doing homework and she tells me that my sister is mad at her. Turns out she wants to go to a very, very expensive performing arts school and miss deadlines for auditioning for other schools. My mom told her that she and my dad won't be paying and that she has no sympathy for missing something my mom told her to keep up with and entitled sister got quiet. I thought nothing of it and went to practice as normal. When I got back, she explained what actually happened. These are just the highlight clips from the real conversation. Mom said I couldn't go to expensive school. No, she said that they can't afford to send you out of state. Oh, but you can go out of state when you graduate. That's fair. The world is just against me. They can't afford it. That's the thing. I have to apply for scholarships to go to school with a good program in my desired field. You could go anywhere. In theater, it's all about who you know. Now, I was entirely improperly pissed off and walked away, not talking to her for the rest of the day. She was supposed to be able to go wherever she wants where I have to settle with a school with a bad program in my field? Even though I've already started saving money to be able to afford where I want to go without my parents' help, she's done nothing for herself and is blaming the world because of it, where I have to stay up until 3 a.m. regularly because of all the work that piles up for school and different things to start looking at good colleges. And instead of looking for any college that she would be able to apply to, she went out with friends for the third night in a row. My mom told her that she could probably take musical theater classes without declaring the major, but my sister threw a temper tantrum and locked herself in our room, locking me out. I'm done with her BS. I can't keep parenting my older sister to make good decisions. Anyway, this ran a bit longer than I wanted, but I had to talk about it. Like, why can't she just take accountability for your own freaking actions. I want to talk to her about it, but all she does is cry and walk away. I don't know what to do next. Hopefully it won't end in arson. Well, yeah, I can tell it's definitely annoying having to be the responsible younger sibling, but um, I just think your sister is a little overwhelmed and she's just not getting started on what she should. She's just filling her life with distractions because that's a lot of what I did. And I think part of the, part of the reason why, uh, in my case at least, was because I had undiagnosed ADHD for like all of my life <laughs> and um, you don't realize how much that could screw you up with the impulsivity and stuff but uh, that's that's just me. Alright, this story is called Entitled Churchgoer. This is my first post. I usually just comment on things, but today I felt like writing this down. I don't know if this counts as entitled, but my friend is gay and has a girlfriend. And one of the people she goes to church with saw a status post of hers with a gay topic and he sent her, one, a really dank meme about people nowadays don't go to church, they are all gay. Two, articles and Bible quotes about how it's wrong to be gay. Then he asked, asked her if they helped and she had to be really sarcastic about it and saying it did help. Honestly, why can't people not freak out at gayness? I'm a little confused as to what what happened here. Does she know he's gay? And she's just like covering up, helping him stay in the closet? <laughs> I don't get it, but seems like there's some potential coolness and uh, you know, uh, niceness, people doing things for each other and having fun, I don't know. Regardless, OP, good job. <laughs> don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.